my mother-in-law is not really nice woman. I was fluctuating with my weight and depression, and she would just say like, oh, you're too fat for my son. And my husband saw it. Where, where is he in all this? He said, that's just my mom, and she'll stop. Dude, he needs to step up, man. What's up? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show. Man, I'm so glad that you are with us, giving us your time. There's a billion podcasts out there, and you chose this one. And I'm so grateful that we are all hanging out. Hey, do me a huge favor. Please, 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 please take one second, literally one second, and hit subscribe. Whether you listen to a podcast, you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And it helps it kick it up into the into the algorithms, and it puts it in front of more people. And uh, man, we want more people to get the help that they need, and not feel like they're so alone during these crazy times. Crazy times. Um, go ahead and hit subscribe. Send an episode to your friend, right? Send an episode to your friend. That'd be awesome. Um, and just above all, thank you. Thanks for riding with us and being in our wacky little gang here, man. All right, let's go to Brian in Huntsville. Alabama. What's up, Brian? Hey, Dr. John. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Things going all right? Uh, they're okay. Uh, I've been married for seven months, and about three or four weeks ago, right before Christmas, my wife told me that she hasn't loved me in a year and is kind of regretting getting married, and she hasn't ever really been alone, and she needs to try to find herself. And I just, like, I don't want to get a divorce. She did say she would go to counseling but i don't really know what that means i don't know what i need to do like i want this thing to work i don't think she she said things aren't looking great i just don't know what all of this means yeah that's my first question to you man one dude i'm um i'm shell shocked with you this catch you off guard kind of had a weird fluke last year but her brother passed away in December of the year before. And I just thought it was like, like an anniversary, just kind of a hard time. Plus it was the holidays, but Mm -hmm. now she's just saying like, it's just, she's just out of love and just isn't feeling it. And I don't really know Mm -hmm. what to do, what to try to change. Is she giving you any Uh, insights as to what you're contributing to this? Or is this, is she doing the classic? Anytime somebody says, I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel. I always, really want to challenge that because man, I don't feel like exercising a lot. It's still not the right thing to just go eat donuts. There's times I don't quote unquote feel in love, but I still need to do the right thing because I love my wife, right? There's a, there's an underlying connectivity there that is way more important than my feelings. And so when someone says, I don't feel, I don't feel, I always want to know what are the, what are the things that are happening around you that are not letting your feelings feel like you're connected and safe? Has she given you any of that info? Uh, she says I'm not, well, we kind of got in a fight cause she said she just didn't feel like she had space. And so I just kind of was like, well, I can go like stay with my parents for like a few days. And then the next day I just, I was just, some of it didn't feel right. And then she said like, she felt like nobody really like listens to her. Or, and then she just feels like she never really has figured out what she wants in life. Hmm. But I don't really know, like, I guess my thing is I was like, you know, the whole time we were dating, like, she was, you know, wanting marriage. You know, we talked about marriage. She was all on board. We planned the wedding. And then she's just saying, now I got to find myself. And yeah, I, like, I, that- I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go backwards right now. OK, I, I, it's easy to say. Yeah, but just like seven months ago, you said this. What matters right now is what she's saying right now. And you're all right to feel completely hit upside the head, like stunned by all of this because of what just happened seven months ago or 10 months ago. Um, but the important thing is right now. Um, and it's hard to move forward with. It sounds to me like, and so this dude, I don't have any like super clinical insight here. It sounds like I've heard this same refrain before a hundred times. Almost without exception, either she has met somebody else that has caused her, either she's got feelings for somebody else or she's she's met somebody else and it is causing her to doubt her commitment to you or she's upset with herself 
And so she's like, I shouldn't even have gotten married. I wasn't ready yet because I clearly have feelings for somebody else, which is dumb because you always have feelings for other people. I mean, it's just life. Or um, she is through with this marriage and she doesn't have the courage to say, I screwed up. I want out. And so she's going to slowly make you the bad guy over time. And the way she's going to make you the bad guy is she's going to slowly hold you underwater. And when you start fighting to breathe air, she's going to point at the fighting and be like, see, look what you're doing. Yeah, like we really weren't uh, fighting. I know she kind of had like a weird childhood, and I, I, I think I mean, I don't, a lot of I, I don't care about any of that, honestly. I mean, she told you she was going to be with you forever, and so now it's how do we create a marriage, and how do we love one another, and how do we help meet each other's needs and heal from what happened to us? I mean, you don't just you, you know what I'm saying like it provides a context, but it's not an excuse, right? Um. But let's let's look at the bright side. She said she'll go to counseling. Um, you said you don't really know what that means. Well, she's just very like pessimistic. Like we talked yesterday, and she was like, "I mean, if you want to move back in, it'll kind of make it easier on everybody." But I really just don't see this thing turning around. So but I, but I, what well, I what, really, like, what happened? She I was, don't know. We were uh, like, I just I. I don't know if I just got too comfortable or. Dude, you've been married seven or... months, man. Like. That's kind of how I feel. I'm like, I just feel like it's too short to fail. I mean, even if she really fell out of love a year ago, I just feel like that's like, like it wasn't until I moved out that she really kind of was like, well, I don't feel like, you know, like I'm getting like you're listening to me and stuff like that, and then she keeps trying to say she's trying to find herself and what she wants, but I don't really know what that means. She hasn't really elaborated. And so I'll, I'll say in her defense, okay. Um, sometimes this idea that um I'm with somebody and they're suffocating me, and maybe it's it's like like you don't even know that you're hurting her or that you are are trying to solve her or fix her issues or you are doing things that make her body feel unsafe. What it looks like. And dude, you sound, I, I'm, I don't think you have a, a mean bone in your body. Like you have no intention to do that, but her body's telling you, I got to get away. Got to get away. Got to get away. Whatever that means. Um, it could be completely unrelated to you. It could be childhood trauma, like coming forth now that she feels bounded and trapped. Who knows? The, you can't always articulate what your body knows. And that's hard to be in a relationship with somebody who can't quite articulate. Like, dude, what is it about me that my presence says you've got to run, right? That's a, that's a terrifying, scary feeling for anybody because you love her, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I don't, I don't want to make her feel like uncomfortable, but I feel like she has a hard time like trying to express like what's going on. She's right. never really been big into like deep conversations or like, how she feels. Mm -hmm. That's always been a little weird. Well, and it may be that growing up, you said she had a weird childhood that just like telling somebody how you felt got you hurt or got you made fun of or got you told you to shut up because nobody cares about your feelings. And so you've just learned, she learned over X, two decades or three decades to just bury them. And now they're coming out in full force because now she's trying to create her own new home or marriage. It could be a, a, a bunch of different things. What counseling will do is let y'all practice relationship with a third party. Okay. It'll let you say things or that person will ask questions that you might either haven't thought of, or um, you've thought of, you just don't feel like you can say it. But when somebody asks you in a, in a therapeutic context, then you can say it and be like, Hey, they asked me, like, I'm not just throwing grenades at you. They wanted to know what was in, in the suitcase. And it makes it, um, it's an easier way to have that conversation, but y'all get to practice saying something she gets to practice saying something hard, you hearing it, and then you get to practice breathing through it and asking how you can help be a part of a solution, et cetera. Does that make sense? So I, I look at therapy as relational practice. It's a way to re-engage connectivity. Um, it does, I mean, it's it breaks my heart that she's like, ah, I'll do it, but it's a waste of our time and money. Like if I'm you, I'd be like, well, crap, should I even do this? I think you should. It sounds like there's something else here. Um, here's how I would have that conversation. I would tell her, I would ask her point blank. Are you finished with this marriage? Just point blank. Are you done? 
And I kind of asked her similar before, and she's just kind of been like, I don't know. Okay. Like, T- it's not looking good, but she hasn't, like, I guess, fully... Tell her th- that's that to me is not is is again is holding you underwater and you haven't started fighting yet. In fact, you took the easy, you, you mean you moved out. You love her so much. You want her to be comfortable so much. You just took off, which good for you. That's that was noble. I'm walking away from a fight in the bar. You all have a great night. I'm out of here. Good for you. But that can't go on forever. And so this whole I don't know, man, I just don't man that that's and you're going to get paper served on you. And you're going to get blindsided again. And so I'd sit down and say, are you done with the marriage? And this whole, I just don't know yet. What, um, that to me is not a good answer. Okay. Like, um, I, like are, if you're in, then we're going to go to counseling. We're going to try to make this thing work. If you are done, have the courage to say, I want to end our marriage. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to file for divorce from you. And I'm going to end this thing. That would be, okay. I, I don't like that I, for you. I hate that for you. I hate that for both of you. But to do anything other than that is just cruel. Like, I just need to find myself and I need to go on a journey. I mean, you got married. And so any journey you take from this point forward, you'll take together. Even if you got to go by yourself, right? My wife goes to her counseling on her own. I talk to people on my own. We're not doing that together. But I'm doing that so that I can be well, so that I can be the best husband I can possibly be. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I told her, like, I want to, like, support her and, like, you know, if she needs anything or what, like, finding herself looks like, but I don't really know. She hasn't really said what that looks like to her yet. Yeah, that's somebody that's read a lot of internet articles and has a feeling of, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Let me, let me just say this. I, I don't think I've ever said this publicly in my life. So here we go. Um. It was after my first or second year of marriage. I didn't think we, my, me and my wife were going to make it. And I was meeting with a guy. We were in the mountains of New Mexico. I was speaking at an event and we were um, somebody that I really, really trusted. And I said, I don't think I should have gotten married. I don't think I was ready for this. And he wisely said, that's how you feel, but that's not true. And in his own wise way, he was telling me there's a difference between reality and truth and your feelings. Our feelings don't tell us the truth. And so you made a commitment and now we're going to get to the bottom of that commitment. We're not going to be led we're gonna, by, our, by a nose ring getting yanked around by our feelings all the time. And you can't discount them. Our feelings are great alarm systems. They get our attention. They, they point us in direction. So you got to listen to them and you got to honor them and you have to acknowledge them. And so I would tell you is I, I wouldn't give up on this marriage. I hope she doesn't give up on this marriage, even though she's seven months in and feels like, whoa, I just feel like I go to counseling together because at counseling, you're gonna be able to say, here's what I'm feeling. And then the, a good therapist will say, tell me more. And then tell me more and then tell me more. And where is that in your body? And tell me more. And you get to the crux of it. And that's where the healing will begin. But this amorphous, I don't know, I just got to find myself. Man, close the computer. Go talk to a, an expert. Close the internet. Stop reading the, the whatever, the magazines in the line. And go sit down with somebody and say, here's what's happening inside of my heart and my mind and my soul. Come struggling. Brian, let me know how that conversation goes. Let me know how your counseling goes, man, because I want to I want um, I want to walk alongside you guys as y'all, if you'll have me, um, as y'all figure out what's next for your brand new marriage. We'll be right back. It seems like everybody is talking about how crazy the housing market is right now and how powerless home buyers feel. Mix that with the stress of moving and life change and job change, and you've got a tornado of anxiety fueling one of the biggest purchases you'll ever make. This is not a good idea. So if you're a new home buyer right now, my advice to you is to focus on what you can control, like the people you choose to help you in the home buying process. You need folks like my friends at Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is a Ramsey trusted provider that's been helping people with their home mortgages for decades decades and their home buyer edge program will help you skip a bunch of the stress. Here's how it works. Apply to become a Churchill certified home buyer and cap your interest rate for 90 days. Then you'll get a $5,000 seller guarantee to help your offer stand out. 
So go ahead, take a deep breath because Churchill has your back. Check them out at churchillmortgage.com slash Deloney and get the home buyer edge today. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100. Brentwood, Tennessee 37027. Programs are for select loan types only and are not available in all states or locations. All right, let's go to Lynn in Portland, Oregon. What's up, Lynn? Hi, Dr. John. Thank you so much for taking my call. Of course. (laughs) Thank you for calling. What's up? Well, okay. Uh, Two very important pieces of information you need to know. (laughs) I forgot to put one of them in my question initially. I have borderline personality disorder. Okay. And I also have a traumatic brain injury. TBI. What happened? Uh, I got hit by a car when I was 17. Oh, man. Yeah. Is, um, is. is, is the effects like, were the effects neurological? Are they, are they, are they ongoing? Yes. Uh, it's, it's permanent. It okay. was originally labeled as severe. I think when I got a little older, they bumped it down to moderate. Uh, but I do struggle with like memory loss. Um, my, uh, frontal lobe was pretty badly damaged. So was my temporal lobe. So, uh, memory decision-making, um, executive functioning in general is not, um, the best. <laughs> you are an impulsive young lady, aren't you? Uh, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do it right now. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, were you diagnosed with borderline before this, or has this been a result of the traumatic brain injury? So, here's the funny thing: I was diagnosed at six with uh, bipolar two which they should not have done. I was too good, young. I was going to say, good Lord. Good grief. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. And uh, well, I ended up going to the mental hospital back in 2020. And that's when they realized, um, just so you know, you have borderline personality disorder and whoever diagnosed you with bipolar did not do their research. Yeah. Um, there's so many things here. So many things. <laughs> um, so let's, let's go back. So you had, a, you had a pretty chaotic childhood. Kind of. Um, like my dad and my grandmother died when I was pretty young and they were at three months apart. Me and my brother were pretty young. I was, I just started middle school. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just asked, did you have a pretty chaotic childhood? And you said, kind of my grandma and my dad died as I was entering middle school. So let's just stop there. You had a very chaotic childhood, Mm -hmm. a painful, traumatic childhood. Okay. Can we sit on that for one second? Yeah. It was hard, huh? It, it was. Yeah. It, it is. Fair? Yeah, that is fair. What was your dad's name? Chris. Do you miss him? What's that? Do you miss him? Oh, every day. There you go. Okay. So let's, I, I don't want you to gloss over it. I want us to, let's just, as, as uncomfortable as it is, let's, let's own reality. Okay. It's hard. <laughs> and then my guess is, um, your mom was s- struggled a lot, huh? Oh yeah. Cause the, my grandmother, that was her mom. My mom was never the same after my grandmother died. Yeah. Or her husband, right? Well, they were divorced. They oh, good grace. You, <laughs> so you. Uh, was your childhood chaotic? Kinda. I came from a divorced home and then my dad, good night. So yes, <laughs> yes. I bet your ACEs, what's your ACEs score? Have you ever taken that? I've taken what? Your ACEs score? No, your, I don't even know what that is. It's a 10 question questionnaire. It's the adverse childhood experiences. I want you to take it when we get off. My guess is just listening to you, yours will be a six or a seven. You, your body has been struggling to find its place in space since you were very, very little. Fair? Yeah. And I bet as a child, you shouldered a lot of... I can t- I guarantee you did, because just how you answered the first question, that whether you were wondering why they got divorced, why daddy chose to leave, why mommy kicked him out, what happened to dad, why did grandma die, like all that as a young kid... You were trying to figure out what you did to make some of those things happen or what role you played in some of those things. Fair? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. 
So then you have this traumatic brain injury. And what happened? Were you driving another car? Were you walking across the road? What happened? Um, I was crossing the street, and I have to say, it partially was my fault simply on the fact that I was jaywalking. And I crossed was a four-lane road, and I got to the last lane, and I got hit by somebody. I went flying over their windshield, and uh, yeah, it almost killed me. Yikes, man. I'm glad you're all right. And so what took you to a... Um to a, a psych hospital in 2020? Uh, I was living with somebody, um, my cousin, and we were drinking a lot. I mean, I'm talking multiple bottles a day. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point where we were just enabling each other. And one day I just couldn't take it anymore. And I was just in a very dark headspace. And I realized I can't do this anymore because if I don't go get help, I'm going to slit my throat or I'm going to do something. I don't mm-hmm. know what, but I need help. And I went twice that summer, um, for both a, th- a three day stay each time, a voluntary mm-hmm. I went, I chose to go. Um, so I could leave whenever I wanted. I, I kind of wish I would have stayed a little longer at the time. Cause I had the means to do so. Can't say I have that now, but okay. even now I think about going back sometimes. Mm-hmm. Are you still, are you still, um, actively suicidal? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, some days are better than others. It kind of depends on, you know, am I taking my meds? Am I, am I in my routine? Mm-hmm. Little things like that do make a big difference. But okay. some days it just comes on and I'm not even prepared to feel yeah. crappy. It just happens. Yeah. I, um, it's really important to me that you call somebody after this and you get checked in. Okay. Yeah. And that's just because I love you. And I want you to be all right. Okay. 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 Do you promise that you'll do that? I swear. Okay. Um, so how can I help you right now? Well, I have gotten to this point where I've been a bit out of control. And by that, I mean, I've been getting more aggressive towards my partner. I've been yelling and screaming and calling him names and getting in his face and, and just not been a very nice person to him. And it's affecting our relationship pretty badly. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just don't want to be like that anymore. It it seems to be a common trend when I live with somebody, some conflict happens and then we're fighting and yelling and screaming, but I'm usually the one who's fighting and yelling and screaming. (laughs) Right. Well, and that's one of the cornerstones of borderline, which makes it so hard is this sense that you feel everything a hundred X what everybody around you is feeling. So when you meet somebody for the first time and you kind of have like, man, I think that, I think she's, she's pretty good looking, man. And I kind of like her. You freaking love you. I love you. I'll sleep with you right now. And, and it's right. And, and then when it's like a disagreement, like, God, that's annoying. You're like, I'm going to burn you to the ground, right? I'm, oh, I'm going to kill you and your family. And, and so it's this, am I right? Yes. It's a thousand. That's pretty spot on. It's a thousand X for somebody with borderline, and that's what makes it so hard. Is somebody who wants to heal. Now, I want to hold a big caveat here. You have a traumatic brain injury. If you've got permanent damage to parts of your brain, this may be something that you wrestle with for the rest of your life, and that's okay. That's just part of it, right? I've got. I had a, a knee surgery. Like, I'm not going to go play basketball anymore. And I loved playing pickup basketball. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I got to, I had to grieve that. It's a, it's a bummer. Now, is that the same thing as like a hippocampal injury or frontal lobe injury? No, you, you'll have more stuff to deal with, but it's just, it's just the cards you were dealt and let's roll with it. Right. And so I hope you hear, I'm, I'm speaking with that light of a, yeah, this is the, this is the, this is the cards I got. Right. And so I'm going to roll with that. I'm not going to go to war against those cards because all that does is make me and everybody around me miserable. The challenge for somebody with borderline is I have to choose to feel less intensely. I have to choose to begin to parse through our feelings. And it feels so good to be in love. And it feels so good to be enraged. Those are drugs. Right. And you have to choose to like get off those drugs. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. It's so frustrating. Have you been through rounds of DBT, uh, dialectical, oh, dialectical behavior therapy? A little bit. Um, okay. My current therapist, who I recently got switched to, he is Oh, hey, hold certified. on, hold on. Don't be a borderline switcher. 
Every, okay, every therapist knows that when you get somebody and they sit down and they go, you're the best therapist I've ever had in my life. My last seven therapists, they all sucked. They were the worst and whatever. Everyone knows, well, looks like you got a borderline here and you just got to hang on for the ride until you turn on them. How many have you been through? Me? Yes. Um, not very many. I have a good, pretty um, good relationships with my therapist. It always just came down to my last two therapists had different jobs or got different jobs and they had to leave. It was oh, never good. That. Okay. You just yeah. made, okay. I thought you were burning through them. All right. I take oh, back what no, I just no, no, said about not you. Not at all. All right. All right. I was wrong. You were right. Way to go. So um, you got a new therapist and you like him. And tell me more. Um, he's certified. Um, like he knows how to do DBT and okay. he um, does DBT groups at the, my doctor's office who hold a lot less intensive of a program mm -hmm. compared to like the Portland DBT Institute. Okay. Um, but on our last visit, he told me that I should find a way to make some space for a more inpatient, I don't know if it's inpatient or outpatient, but a more intensive program yep. because he's worried about me. He's worried about my impulsivities and mm -hmm. my, um, just all in all in all my out of control, out of control behavior. We've talked a lot about it. We've talked a lot about the yelling and the screaming mm -hmm. and the, and the name calling and just the outright, just piss poor behavior I've been showing lately. And it's, are you self harming worried. me? No, yeah. I mean, no, I don't like cut or burn myself or do any of that stuff, but I suppose okay. I self harm in the sense of like, I don't really dig into my hobbies. Like I should, I just watch TV a lot or okay. do a lot of monotonous activities because it's all I feel like I have time for or the energy for. Why, why don't you think Lynn deserves peace? Mm. I've been around chaos my whole life. Your whole life. It's hard to feel like I can have some quiet for a change. Yeah. Because when chaos is your drug, peace feels very, very stressful. Oh, yeah, sometimes. And it's learning, Sorry. how do I learn how, this is just something you have to practice over time. That's what DBT is. You're going to have to practice feeling enraged and letting it run through you and then going, okay, what's the reality here? This guy loves me. He's not going anywhere. Um, I am enraged. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go for a walk. And that sounds bananas to you right now because what you want to do is hit him as hard as you can. And it's it's a choice that I want my life to be more peaceful and I'm going to have to practice it. And I'm going to have to learn it because I've never even seen it. I don't even know what that, I don't, you can, I can say peace all day long. You're like, okay. Um, it's like trying to explain a dinosaur to somebody who's never seen one. Like it doesn't make any sense. I don't know what you're talking about. And so you're going to have to decide Lynn is worth a less electrified life. And I need you to hear me say, I think you're worth that. Your therapist thinks you're worth that. And the crummy thing about being an adult and caring about people is we can't make you do that. You have to choose. That's true. Yeah. And what I'll tell you is you have exceeded your capacity to handle this by yourself. Not in those words, but uh, you're not the first person to tell me that. <laughs> or at least people around me are aware that I'm at a heightened state. Okay. And that I'm struggling. Yes. Call today. I feel bad, though. My family doesn't always know how to help me. I know. But I always try to tell people, like, I'm not expecting people to, like, have solutions for me. All I ask is that you sit with me while I'm going through it. And I feel like a lot of people have figured that out. But mm -hmm. I feel like there's some people in my life that haven't quite picked up it, on that here's yet. here's the hard thing they get to choose that mm -hmm. they get to choose that and sometimes our rage and our our lashing out and our yelling and screaming is a way we can buffer sadness because our bodies don't know how to feel sad because last time we felt sad dad moved out and last time we felt sad grandma died and last time we felt sad dad passed away and last time we felt sad mom was just checked out a zombie and so your body's created some really powerful strategies for not being sad. I do tend to fight it a lot. That yeah. feeling, yeah. try to numb it out with something else sometimes. It's a, it's a black hole, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and you can't go through, you can't go down that hole alone. I need you to hear me. I need you to promise me you will call somebody today. I will. Nope. Say, I love Lynn enough that I will call somebody and get help today. I love Lynn enough that I will call somebody today when I get off the phone. Thank you. I'm proud of you. What you're about to embark on is going to be hard. and It's going to be something you're going to have to grind through a little bit and you're going to have to be brave. And I'm really, really proud of you. I appreciate that, Dr. John. Is it cool? It'll be cool. I'll... Are you going to hang up and be like, that guy's the worst podcaster ever? Because that'd be a very borderline oh. thing to do. <laughs> God, no, 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 no. no I, I was surprised you guys even picked my question. I honestly thought it was going to get lost in a sea of a thousand questions. Honestly, I'm, I'm quite honored. No, You're I, really good at what you do. I'm honored that you, uh, trust me, I have a, I have a, a deep heart for folks with borderline because it's a tough, tough, tough road to hoe. And the thing that you need more than anything is peace and relationships. And the hardest thing in the world to come by is peace and relationships. And it's hard to be in relationship with somebody with borderline. It's hard. It's hard to love somebody that's, that is um, so back and forth all the time. Right. And you know that. And oh, yeah. it's, or it's hard to be so deeply in love and to get hit in the fa- <laughs> hit in the face or to be told, I, I can't breathe without you. That's how much I love you. And then 30 minutes later, it's like, I hate you, right? It's hard. Um, yet it is so powerful. And so I've got a special place in my, in my heart for folks uh, who are struggling with this. And uh, my oldest friend on planet Earth is a TBI survivor, a traumatic brain injury survivor. And so I've got a heart for that. So um, I'm grateful for you, for, for your trust. And I'm, I'm more so than that, I'm really grateful that you're going to call today and get somebody that's going to walk alongside you, get a whole team. Um, It's inpatient time, and we're going to go spend some time getting some rest and getting the help that we need. I'm grateful for you, Lynn. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, Deloney here. Listen, I get questions about sleep all the time on my show. And man, we have so distorted our perception of sleep. Either we pretend we've evolved past it and I'll sleep when I'm dead, or we overcomplicate it and think we need a million products and pills and anything to get sleep. And sleep is important. It's crucial to your mental and physical health. But there are so many simple things you can do, like go to bed and get up at the same time every day, kill the electronics an hour before bed, and make sure you've got a great mattress. This is one product I do recommend investing in for quality sleep. And that's why I love DreamCloud. Their mattresses are made with advanced technologies to keep you comfortable all night for a great price. And right now, DreamCloud is offering 25% off any mattress plus $599 in accessories and an additional $50 discount with code John Deloney. It's one word. So go to dreamcloudsleep.com and enter promo code John Deloney to get your new mattress today. All right. All right. Let's go to Ava in Richmond, Virginia. What's up, Ava? Hi, how are you? I am most excellent. How are you? I am good. Well, I think I'm good. <laughs> oh gosh, so you're not good. It's okay to say it. What's up? Um, so my question is, um, as you know, the holidays you're dealing with families, in-laws, and um we had a trip with my in-laws and um and I've been with my uh husband for uh we're going to be 18 years in February. No, 19 years in February. Ooh, and congratulations. So we've been together Ava. forever. Thank you. Thank you. You have kids? Um, he's my, yes, we have two kids. And I mean, we've been through so much together. Mm-hmm. And um, you're about to I say he's your, with him. you're about to say he's your what? He's my high school sweetheart. Oh, um, gross. I met him in, in night school. Gross. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry, but it's it is what it is. I no. met him in high school. That's love. I and, love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and um, so I fell in love with him and all this stuff because he's he's a really good. I think he's a good person. But um, you know, throughout our relationship, we've sort of had issues with uh, my mother in law's not really nice woman. Okay. Um, and I was really um, I was when I first. 
started, I would say, a very nice. I, uh, in my culture, you know, and I think in a lot of cultures, but um, they're very big on respecting elders. Mm-hmm. Like it's a very, like it's it's very like it's very big. What's your culture? And, um, I'm Ethiopian. Okay. Um, Excellent. And so it's very big in in that in that aspect. And so when I met his mom, she would just be the meanest, evilest person in the world. And you know, I come. Give me an example. Um, an example uh, is um, I came home and I was uh, living with her. Um, I came home from finding out that um. I'm adopted, by the way. So okay. having a family is very big for me. And my, um, I came home, but that I found out that I was, um, I was already four months pregnant. I knew that I was happy, but I was having issues. And I came home and I lived with her and she stood there and she speaks a different language from me. Mm-hmm. But um, she stood there in front of my husband and said, you know, you killed the baby, right? And oh. I could understand at that time because I've been with him about two years, so I could understand Spanish. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so I'm so sorry. No, I mean that's that's like the nice, nicer thing that she did. No, that's, but yeah, um, not great. I, it would be times where I was fluctuating with my weight and depression, and you know, um, of uh, and and all these things, and so. Um, She would just say like, oh, you're too fat for my son. Or she would say like, um, just a lot of mean things. Just, and my husband saw it. Like he, it was Where where is he in all this? He just didn't say anything. He said, that's just my mom and she'll stop. Sister Ava, dude, he needs to step up, man. Oh, so he's definitely, you know, he's, um. A coward? He was the yeah. 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 So no, dude. He's he's, like, he was the fir- he's a coward. He's man. the first boy. He's the first boy. She's. Um, hey, listen. I could high. care less. I'm the first boy in my house. Yeah. Well, his father is not in his life, so I feel like. Listen. Me, if my mom said that did. to my to my wife, mm-hmm. <laughs> it would. I but mean, I wasn't his wife at that time. So it doesn't. You were about disposable. to be the mom of his baby. Yeah. But he allowed it. That's, and, and, and he's continued to allow it? Hmm? And he's continued to allow it? Oh, yeah. But, you know, over time, I sort of, what he wanted is for me to stand up to her. And no, so that was a little no! bit. No, That's his job. <laughs> it's his mom. I know. So that was a little bit, um, that was the most difficult because in my culture, you're not even supposed to, like, come to an, a, like someone that's older than you in that aspect. And so I continue to sort of put my head but, but down. Hold on, hold on. And, hold on. There's a cultural aspect, hundred percent. You, you honor, you honor, um, elders to the end of time. You get yeah. on, you get onto the bottom of the ocean on that ship. I get that. Yeah. There's also something you're not admitting to yourself. And that is your husband is leaving you out to dry. And oh yeah, I, I would t- I would tell him true. that if he was on the phone. I wish he was on the phone because I, I don't like talking oh, about people. Oh, he's in the other room. But he's in the other room. I can get him for you. But, um, he yeah. has got to say, yeah. "Mom, we are not coming to your house anymore because of how you talk to my <laughs> wife, the mother of my children." Period. Yeah. Conversation ends. Yeah, I wish that was that because um, it just kept rolling and. More things happen, and then we'd get over it. I wouldn't talk to her, and I would stand up for myself. And he's like, good job. You're standing up for yourself. And, and you know, me, like I said, I'm adopted. I, I was in so many years of my life where I was not protected by anyone, and I didn't need anyone to protect me, but I felt sort of— Yes, um, you did. We all do. We all do. Yeah. I do. I, I, we all do. We all do. We yeah. all do. And you still yeah, do. Yeah, we do. I still do, but um. Okay, so, so what? Ha- so what happened? Did you have a big blow up? Did you go to war? So m- my mother in law, we wanted her to be with us because me and my husband, we when we traveled, we're like, hey, we have an extra room. You can stay in that room. You have your own bed, your kitchen, everything. Awesome. And she was fine. 
And then, like, when her other kids start coming, she sort of, like, tends to take things out on me mm-hmm. because I'm easy to take out on. You know, I'm not related to her. So it's easy to be mean to me. And so she would just say certain things like, oh, you know, like, I love to cook. I love to, like, I just, you know, I want to, I'm very, um, I think one of the things my husband maybe doesn't like about me is that I'm very, I think about others a little too much and maybe I don't think about myself. Um, but I, I was like, you know, that's probably because he loves you and cares about you and watches you, you know, drive yourself into the ground trying to be a peacekeeper. Right. All right. Go go to it. Go to it. Go to it. We're getting up against the clock. Go to it. So, okay. So what happened is, um, we had a big blow up. Um, whenever, I said something and I, um, I disrespected my husband in front of her. What'd you say? Um, and then I said, I said, <laughs> it's really bad. I said, I am the unlucky dumbass being with you. And, um, that sounds like Kelly says that to me all the time. <laughs> well, his mother said something in regards of, I didn't want to curse, but, um, I always did, but she sort of said, um, you know, you're, she said, I don't want this B I T C H to talk about my son or treat my son like this. Now, mind you, I, I take, I think me personally out of anyone that they know, they know my husband, their, their brother, their son is treated better than their own house. They know that. Like <laughs> right, I, I believe right, right, right. everyone in the family knows he is taking care of. But the, the, this is somebody who is, yes, was what you said mean? Yes, yeah, fine. That's somebody who is looking for any tiny, tiny little crack. Yes. Yes. To just yes. blow right through it to knock the whole building down. Yes. So she, so, so the whole thing is that. Like, I would say this, if my wife said that about me in front of uh my, my dad, my mom, Uh they would laugh Uh and they would say, (laughs) yep. Nah. Okay. I just want, I want to give you some other context. My parents are great people. My parents love me dearly, but they also trust my wife implicitly. Yeah. Like a daughter, Um, not like some weird, like tumor that's been added onto our family. Okay, so that's how she treats me. How can I? How can so, I help? So my thing is, the whole blow up happened. It got physical because she pushed me. Oh, I pushed her back. Damn, Gina, y'all were in it. Okay, we were. It was. I've never touched. Like it was really bad. Okay. Anyways, my issue is throughout the trip, my husband and me discussed it, and I said, "Hey, you have to protect me. You have to put a pause on your mom." Even the sisters were telling him, "Like, be careful with my." Like everybody knew. Mm-hmm. And so my question is, how do I, I told them from now on, I don't want his mom in my life. Correct. That's just it. I don't want her in my life. I just don't think I know how to respond when someone attacks. L- let me say, th- let me say, it, let me say it this way for you. Mm-hmm. Her, your, your mother-in-law has opted out of your life because you owe Ava safety and you owe Ava peace and you owe Ava dignity and respect. And this person, I don't care if she is a stranger, somebody at the bus stop, or your mother-in-law, has chosen to physically assault you, to disrespect you, to take your dignity away from you, to make you feel less than on a regular basis to prop herself up and her place in her firstborn son's life. And so Uh, you're not kicking her out of nothing. Yeah. She has chosen to not be a part of your life because she doesn't treat you like a human being. Full no. stop. Yeah. So I don't want you walking around with the burden of guilt and don't let your husband put that on. Well, we can't go because you won't be around mama. No. Your mom has So cho- what do I do then? Like for Dude, my son and my daughter. And like my, the great Jay-Z says, you brush your shoulders off and go on to the next. But she's like, no. what do I do if it's family events? sweet if she chooses to if if the rest of the family chooses to have her there then they are choosing to not have you there and that's fine so that gonna, means don't go if she goes no. there don't go there why would you go okay, there don't, i don't know to ex- anymore <laughs> to experience violence to experience disrespect and listen you're teaching your kids yeah that's the sad part your <laughs> husband so is, is teaching your kids 
hey, when somebody attacks your mother or my wife, we just keep going back for more. We just keep going back for more. I don't say nothing. That's her problem. So I should just like for the relation, how do I stay out of the relationship between, cause I've never been, I've always said, Hey, Juan, you know, um, uh, uh, sorry. Hey, Don, can you please contact your mom? Can you please, um, you don't need nothing. call your mom and we'll, see how she's doing? Nope. He is. If, no he, if he chooses to have a relationship with her, great. That's wonderful. Um, unless it's not <laughs> right. I mean, if he forgets her birthday, that's a choice he's made. Okay. You're not his mommy. Yeah, so stop stop pushing that. That's, I yeah, I mean, here ultimately it's a it's a non-confrontational. I'm not fighting anybody. Okay. I'm going to tell my husband. I'm going to tell my wife. Yeah. Hey, I just want I, I'm I am I am drawing boundaries. You have told me that this is my fight for my whole life. You've never stepped up to help me out, so I've I'm choosing how I'm ending this fight. I will not okay. go to events if if with with your mother there. She okay. is she has chosen to um, not be around me, and so she's not going to be around my kids. I okay. can't tell you what to do. You're a grown man. If you want to go to family get-togethers and whatever, you're welcome to do that. My kids, um, I don't feel safe with them there. So and, I can say it's it's not crossing the line by saying I feel like I'm hurting someone. You know, I don't. I don't want to hurt anyone. I just. This is a little know, girl I, who's still wondering why her mom and dad sent her away. Yeah. yeah. Ava, you are loved. So it's okay for them to say to, and it's not mean if I tell my husband, Hey, you know, I, you can go, but my kids are going to, I don't feel safe with my kids being with her. Absolutely. I mean, Even if my kids want to go. Your job, my kids want to eat donuts 24, 7, 365. My job as a parent is that's not safe, right? It's not yeah. good. Their insides will melt. It's like, it's, 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 that's my job as a parent. My son wants yeah, to go but, ride four wheelers. He's not going to do that. He's, you know what I mean? Like it's not safe. And so it's my job. And so, Yes. There is a hundred, a hundred percent, every reason to believe mm -hmm. that the animosity and hatred that that woman has displayed to the wife of her son mm -hmm. will She'll be transferred to your language. kids. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Very yes. No question about it. I also think it's very, very fair. And it might not be okay. the season, but it is very fair. Okay. To tell your husband that you yeah. are heartbroken that he never stood up for you. Yeah. Heartbroken. She's not talking to him either. Cause she, well, because she's a child. Um, <laughs> she's, a, she's a child. <laughs> she is a spoiled yeah. brat child. Period. Yeah, she's not talking to him because uh, she said, uh, he didn't even stand up for me. He said... To her, you're making my life difficult. And she said, Oh my God. <laughs> he told oh her that. And when he told her that, he got so upset and said, How can you go against me? You know, I am your mother. How can you go against me? And he told her, I'm not going against you. The kids told me you put your hands on my wife and then and then also hurt the little there was a little girl involved that she hurt. And so I was defending. And so even to yesterday, I asked, I said, are you upset at me? You know, because we're having huge issues now. And yeah. he's like, no, I'm not. Ha I'm not upset at you because you defended yourself from my mother. I knew my mother was going to do that to you. I, I knew and I walked away knowing that. And to me, I guess with that. That breaks response, my heart. That breaks my heart for him, man. Yeah, I wish he just sort of, I yeah. wish he could just say to me like, I'm wrong. Like all I want from my husband is just to say, I have not defended you yeah. all this time and protected you as what it should have been my duty. Have I you believe said, Hey, like have you said that to him? Cause it's in there now. You've not said that out loud before. Have you? I said it to him so many times okay. and it has been deaf ears. And so maybe cool. He's I left you. Know. He's left you to defend yourself. Great. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And I want you to, um, 
this is going to be something that you practice, but I want you to say that with peace in your heart. I want you to say that with joy and optimism. Me and the kids, we're going to a water park. We're going to okay. stay in a hotel and we're going to have pizza and movies and just be ridiculous for 48 hours. That's what we're going to do. Okay. You are, I would love, love, love for you to join us. But if you yeah. want to go there, that's great. Okay. It's disgusting and disrespectful for a in-law to put themselves between their child and their child's spouse. Yeah. It's it's the it's one of the lowest forms of immaturity because that should be a relationship that parents should be championing and cheering for and lifting up. So yeah. glad that you of all people picked my son and I wouldn't have picked you for him. I think you're weird. I think you're not the right culture. I think you're not the right whatever, yeah. religion, whatever. But my son picked you and I raised a good guy. I trust him. And so he picked you. We pick you. We're all in. That's how yeah. that should be. And it should be every single thing I can do to lift you guys up. Yeah. Not okay. everything I can do to get between you two. I, you need to remember, I'm the mom here. No, dude. No, it's wrong. It's yeah. wrong. It's wrong, Ava. And you're not the crazy one. For two decades, you have not been the crazy one. <laughs> can, can, is, it, is, it, um, is it bad or is it wrong that I, throughout this whole time, you know, I, I thought about her. Like, I actually thought about, like, how is she doing? No, you're a Whenever compassionate. Whenever she left the hotel, like, st listen, I listen, felt listen. so sad for her. Stop thinking that your feelings are bad or wrong. They just are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What you what you choose to meditate on? Yeah. Like if you go down a roll like a rabbit hole, like oh, I just want the worst for her. I would say that's no. that's not right. You know what I mean? No, or if that's you, the opposite. That's I, I know, I know. No, I'm just, I'm just saying more for her. Or if you choose to start sending her emails from a secret account just to harass her, that's your actions aren't right. Okay. Your <laughs> thoughts and actions, you can judge those. Your feelings, they just come, man. They come. And you yeah. have never had permission to feel. Yeah. And so, yeah, dude, you, if you, if you, that's the kind of person you are, oh gosh, I wish we had more hearts like yours. If somebody hurts you and on their way out, you wonder, I hope they're okay. I hope they're, I hope, I hope they're okay. That's, that's pouring heaping coals on the head of your enemy, man. Like, cause you, you literally hope, no, it's not bad. It's not good. It's probably not wise to then call and reach out and try to repair that relationship as though you did something wrong because you didn't. Yeah, you popped off about off about her son. Who cares? It's not worth physical violence. It's not worth hurting a little kid. You're good. You're good. And maybe for the first time, this is a season. How about this? I want you to get a journal. I want you to start writing Ava letters about how you feel, what you're worth, what you wish had happened, and more importantly, what you need going forward. And these can be some awkward, hard conversation with your husband, but you need him not to leave you out on an island, emotionally or physically. Y'all are in this thing together. Thanks for trusting us. Thanks for giving me your call. We'll be right back. It seems so easy, but most of us way undervalue real, genuine relationships. Our friendships, our marriages, we don't know what we're doing. And instead of diving into the mess, we accept shallowness and distraction and we wallpaper over our loneliness. So let me say this boldly. You cannot be well alone. You've got to get connected to real life people and have deep, powerful relationships. I'm talking about relationships where you can be honest, where you can open up, where you can share hard things, and you each know that you'll still show up for each other. And in my new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, we'll walk through a not-so-complicated approach to relationships, mental health, and wellness, and getting connected is a key part of that. That's why you'll learn shallowness and loneliness are so dangerous, and more importantly, you'll learn how to create meaningful relationships in your life moving forward. There is no good app to help adults find friendships, but this book can help. Go to johndeloney.com to take the next step towards wellness. That's own your past, change your future at johndeloney.com. All right, as we wrap up today's show, man, I just want to thank y'all so much for being with us today. Uh, don't forget, subscribe. 
pass it along, like, thumbs up, whatever else. Um, hey, follow me on Instagram too, at John Deloney, D-E-L-O-N-Y. Uh, I never thought I would say those words out loud, but I just did. Follow me on the internet uh, at Instagram. Today's song of the day, I was singing it, walking into the booth today. And it just so happens that the first call was asking the same thing. The song's by Foreigner. Kelly does not have this tattoo. I won't lie about it. <laughs> song is, I want to know what love is. And it goes like this. I got to take a little time, a little time to think things over. I better read between the lines in case I need it when I'm older. I didn't know what that means. Now this mountain I must climb feels like a world upon my shoulders. Through the clouds I see love shine. It keeps me warm as life grows colder. In my life, there's been heartache and pain. I don't know if I can face it again. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. I want to feel what love is. I know you can show. That's it. All right. Hey, I love y'all. We'll see you soon. <laughs>